Hey guys, I'm back here again. Got another quick video here for you. We finally got the uh, Toro personal pace machine all ready to go back to customer here for that specifically. This is the uh, Toro Super Recycler, Super Re Recycler as they call it right here specifically for that. This one has the uh, Toro GTS, uh, you know, label or a uh, badge on the top of the engine right here specifically for that. This one has the older uh, horsepower rating on here. The newer ones do not have the horsepower rating because unfortunately the manufacturers were sued uh, a few years back and they had to change the um, designation or how they uh, rated engines output. So this one has the older horsepower. The newer ones had the torque rating on them specifically for that. This, this is the Toro GTS guarantee to start. This one guarantee to start on the first or second pull and it has a six horsepower reliable engine built by Briggs and Stratton right here. This one has the uh, 2000 model year engine on here. Uh, the older ones uh, typically they will not have the identification uh, tag right here. You'll, you'll have a tag over here however this tag is like a superficial uh, you know, call. Like a, it's like a plate right there for that. Your identification tag on the older ones right here like this one. I think it's like up to about 2003 or 04. Uh, they'll be on the front cover right down here so I'll show you that right now so you can see that for verification on this one right here. Your identification tag will be right so you can get a better shot here for you. It's right underneath here. You got your uh, cylinder head here, so you can get a better shot with a camera focuses. Sorry about that. Uh, your identification tag will be right underneath here. You got your three bolts on the cylinder head right here, and your identification tag will be directly above that, uh, underneath your shroud right here on this you know plastic uh, cover for the um, you know the engine right here for that. So if you're looking for your identification tag, it'll be directly underneath the sh shroud, and it'll be on top. Of the uh, you know the, the cylinder head right here, the actual three bolts. So this looks straight up, and it'll be about a half an inch above that. And you'll see the tag right here. You have to use a brush or something to wipe it off right here for that. But other than that, that's where your tag will be on the older style engines right there, specifically for that. So we'll go ahead and put it back down here. Uh, this one has the nice and uh, thick deck on here. I believe this is a. Uh, aluminum deck they have on these ones right here but this is nice and thick this is not the cheap uh the newer decks they have like the cheaper steel ones like the stamp steel one this is like a, a lot thicker deck out here for that uh me personally i like this one because it's like a commercial style or commercial duty type of machine right here for that it's uh built to a lot better quality if you want to call it that and uh, that's what it looks like right there. It has a nice big um, uh, chute on the side over here. Uh, this is this is like uh, we're gonna call refer to as like a, 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 a tunnel deck style right here for that. So the deck design is uh, slightly uh, you know improved as opposed to the newer ones they have on the newer machines out there for that as reference points. But the newer machines have the steel deck, and this one is the aluminum version right here for that. And you, you can typically tell by the uh, older design they have these. Uh, different style uh, wheels on these machines right here for that These these wheels seem to hold up quite uh, quite good on here for that this thing like I said before it's a 2000 uh, Mall year and these wheels seem to be working quite good and they're not even worn down to the uh, base of the uh, the rubber on here for that so they look a great and they um, appear to be uh, still functional and you know functional condition out there for that and they also have a uh, different uh, you know lettering on here for the high adjustment right here as well too you have a is an apple, B is in boy, C is in Charlie, D is in dog, E is an elephant. So you have one, two, three, four, five. You have four, or you have, actually you have five different settings on there for that. So you have a uh, you have independent selection between each uh, axle right here. So your left one, right one, and the two back ones always have their independent uh, selectors right there for that. Uh, this one has a older uh, Briggs and Stratton engine on this one specifically for that. This one has the primer. Uh, system where you get to push the primer thing about three or four times to get started. Uh, this one we did have to rebuild the carb on here. Uh, we did have to put about five air intake gaskets on it for that. Uh, your carburetor and between your air box you have a uh, gasket that has to be installed in order for the primer system to work correctly. This one had to have five intake gaskets installed. Typically we put about two or three on most machines. However, this one right here required about five because this one's getting old and it simply would not prime uh, with only two or one gaskets on here for that. So if you have an older machine and it's not pumping up on the primer right here when you're starting to start the machine, you might have to put three to five intake gaskets on the air box assembly for it to work correctly. So keep, keep that in mind. 
if your primer bulb does not want to pump up correctly and you uh, also change it as well too because we uh, put a new one in here and it didn't do any difference so we put the old one back in and we put some oil down inside the base right here and we also put five intake gaskets between the air box and the carb and it pumps up okay now so it's relatively good so we did the uh, tune up on the machine the oil was uh, totally black in here and low we had changed the oil out about three times on the engine got your oil dipstick over here oil oil is relatively clean now even it's still a little bit dark on it because we, we put uh, typical dino juice back in the engine right here for that a typical like a synthetic blend um uh, sn sn uh, plus uh, sn i think it's sn5 rating or something i don't know what it is sn plus rated whatever uh, oil from um uh, wolf's head so the oil's uh you know up to spec modern spec i uh, did a tune up on the machine new spark plug new air filter oil change by three times like i said before on this machine uh, we did sharpen up the uh, the blade on the machine as well too and uh, we also had to do the uh, gas tank on it this gas tank uh, we also had to replace a fuel line. The gas tank was developing a split on the side right here. You have these seams that go around the outside of the, of the uh, tank right here. And what happens is they develop a split over time because for whatever reason, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It, it just might be getting uh, worn or just plain old. Uh, they start developing a split along the seam of these gas tanks right here for that. We had to order a new gas tank in from the factory. Uh, let me see. We also had to do. We had to get a new uh, two new cables. And uh, I think that was I think that was everything the parts we had to order in from the factory. So I'll go ahead and show you the tank right here. Here's the old tank. Here's the fuel line and the cables here as well too. So I'll just show you that right now. Here's the old uh, fuel line right here. This is what the fuel line, fuel line looks like after about 20 years. This one's totally it's getting rotted. It's, uh, you can see it right here, it's getting rotted up at the uh, end right here. It's getting all cracked and frayed, and this thing's getting extremely stiff right here for that. And uh, we had to replace it because it would not seal correctly. And it's always a good idea to replace these fuel lines because over time they swell and they also get uh, contamination, water contamination. That's one of the biggest things we see over here where the inside diameter of the uh, tank or the fuel line is white inside, and that's typically caused by fuel contamination issues right there as well too. Uh, here's your cable. We had to replace the cable on here. Now, these cables are uh, bent pretty bad. This is the one cable I think for the uh, bail control right here. So we replaced that. Here's your bail control cable. It's getting uh, kind of stiff down side right down inside the actual cable because you have this nice big, nice big kink. It looks like somebody tried to um, you know smash the uh, the cable right here between the. Uh, you know, two connectors right here. Typically, people people uh, you know bend these things and they take them apart. And what happens is they bend them forward or backward, and it really screws up the cabling right here for that. And as you see right here, the cable is quite significantly bent, and it should be nice and smooth and straight, but it's not. So it had to be replaced because of that fact. And the other cable, we had to replace the other cable right here as well too. This is the drive cable off the machine. Your drive cable goes back to the transmission in the back right here. Here's the cable back here. Right back there, this cable is, was indeed screwed up. It's uh, cracked and damaged right down here. It is rusty. As you see right down inside the cable is rusty. It's all rusted up right there. And this one is also kinked. You have severe kink right down inside here. And it's also cracked and damaged right here as well too. So this one is definitely broke. So we had to replace two cables. You had to order them in from uh, Toro. Those two cables had to be ordered in from Toro, and the gas tank had to be ordered in from uh, Brig and Stratton. Here's the new, here's the old, actually, here's the old gas tank right here for that. This is the old gas tank right here. The crack, I'll show you where the crack started right here. It should be right around, uh, I think it's right around here somewhere. Let me see. Let me double check it here, guys. I know the crack was over by the, uh, the lip of the tank right there for that, so let me double check it here. Let's see if you get a better shot. Yeah, here it is right here. Yeah, it started splitting right around here. You can, it, it, you can, you, can pr you probably can't see it, but the uh, the split is definitely there because what, what what I do is typically fill a gas tank all the way up to the top capacity to verify that the seal and the seams okay on here. And this thing has a split. You can you can barely see it right here, but it is it is there. There's a split right there. And what happens is whenever you fill the gas tank to the top almost up to the top of the actual um you know where that little that little cylinder down here is give you a little little um 
uh, little hole right here. You fill all the way to the top right there, and you'll notice uh, that, 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 that the gas tanks seal around the hole. You know, the top portion, bottom portion is okay, and it was leaking right on here. It started pouring out. It started dripping down. And it started going around the side of the tank right here. For that, so it's always a good idea to verify the tank is structurally okay before you give it back to the customer. Other than that, uh, the air seal on the outside, this whole back seal looked okay. Uh, seal on the air side was okay over here. Didn't have any splits or nothing on that one here. The inside looked okay. It was just primarily uh, right here. I don't know why, but it was just like splitting right along here and this uh, this piece right here. You can you can barely see it, but it, it's it's covered up with dirt right now, so I can't really you know demonstrate right now. But it is there, so it's always very it's always a good idea to verify the tank is structurally okay before you give back to the customer. So. That's what we had to do here. Typically, we had to order in from the manufacturer. Shipping is usually about seven to, pen, seven to ten bucks for a tank for like flat rate. And the other order for the two cables right here, we had to order the two cables in here from the um, uh, Toro. Shipping is about seven to ten bucks right there for that. Cables are about 20, 25 bucks. Uh, the gas tank right here is another about 40, about 45 bucks for the tank right here for that. So you're looking at you're looking at about uh, probably about 90 bucks right there plus shipping, and handling, tax and insulation right there as well too so that's everything for the job right there uh we'll go ahead and fire the machine up here and we'll do a demonstration video for the machine's functionality and uh, overall you know you know driving else uh there was one other thing we had to do the machine right here uh the uh, left rear uh drive um portion of the transmission you have uh gears down inside your wheel right down inside here and the what, what, what happens is when your transmission drive shaft comes out of the transmission you have like a locking gear that uh, ratchets up onto the uh, connector down here and it engages against the wheel and it allows the uh, gear to uh, function with the drive under for that this one he had a lot of corrosion and dirt down in there, so we had to take this thing apart and uh, clean it up, put it back together, lubed, and we, uh, we'll we do a demonstration right now for that as well. I think, I think that was the last thing we had to do here, so we'll go ahead and put the camera down here real quick, and I'll get it fired up here, and we'll do a demonstration of the functionality of the machine so you can see it running for the final video for this Toro self-propelled lawnmower. So let me, let me verify here. Hold on. i got to put my camera down real quick. So the machine's ready to go back to the customer there. It's all uh, ready to go. Uh, everything's done on there. They should be happy and uh, should be uh, running for years after today. Uh, one thing I do recommend is putting like some kind of grease or synthetic oil on your uh, personal paste drive system over here. You have these um, bars right here for that. And it's a good idea to put some uh, grease on those uh, bars right there so they um, you know, function better out there for that. This whole thing slides up and down on this uh, whole bar uh, mechanism right here for that. It's a good idea to put some grease or some kind of oil on there so it functions better over time. I will give you a shot of the actual engine, uh, I should say the model number tag of the machine. Okay, here we go. Get this thing cleaned up on here, sorry about that. Here's your tag right there. 20043 manufacturer serial number 2100 right there so this is a uh, 2001 however the machine has an engine with a 2000 date so i basically consider it 
a uh, 2000 model year even though the machine was manufactured in 2001 and the engine itself was manufactured in the year 2000 here specifically for that so we'll give you a quick walk around here here's the one side Here's your front side. Here's your straight on, head on view. Here's your left side. Here's your left side flat view. And your back side with the controls, anything else engaged and disengaged. It's like so. Everything functions smooth on here. Cable's working good. Everything looks good. And the uh, control here for the uh, bagger works good. This thing works good here, no problem with that. Doesn't have any kind of issues. So that's good to go. It's always a good idea to keep uh, keep these things in a shed out there for that so they don't uh, have any kind of rust or anything else build up on them, even though it is aluminum deck right here for that. So everything functions great, no problem. And as I said before, uh, if you run into any kind of problems trying to uh, get your air box to pump up correctly on here, uh, this one I do recommend swapping out the primer bulb first, uh, putting some oil on the primer bulb as well too. And if, if that doesn't work and it's still having a hard time priming, uh, I recommend installing about three to five intake gaskets on the intake manifold right here specifically for that because typically the factory only has about one intake gasket on there. What the problem is over time is the uh, air box itself can possibly warp and become damaged and it's always a good idea to put multiple gaskets between the air box and the carb assembly right here for that. This one has five intake gaskets right now in order for that function correctly because I did not want to uh, call up the customer and explain to them why we had to order another uh, you know, intake air box assembly which is like another 30 bucks right there for that so uh, doing it cheap uh, way but uh, most of the time it does work sometimes it doesn't work but uh, it's always a good idea to try to put multiple intake air box gaskets before you replace the air box and the air box assembly cover right there for that reference guys so anybody has any comments questions whatnot this has been the final video for the toro personal pace self-propelled drive lawnmower here this is the older 2000 2001 model this one has a 2000 model year engine and it was produced in the year 2000 so i'm, I'm thinking maybe like January, February of 2001. However, the engine itself was produced probably sometime in late uh, 2000 for reference points. The machine is technically about 20 years old, so guys, so that's what it is. So if anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot, feel free to leave me a message here, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.